offline may contain sexually oriented content. Content. Listener discretion is advised. Adam Corolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline, coast to coast. Imagine that. Yeah. EFD. Dr. Drew, everyone, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Ryan Reynolds is our guest tonight. Hi. Ryan, uh, I think wow. I first met when I did that Two Guys, a Girl, in the Pizza Place. You remember? Yes, years uh, ago. Yeah. Ryan is the handsome blonde from that series for uh, <laughs> all those years. And uh, just to show you that the good things happen to good people every once in a while, he's now uh, starring in Perfect Timing. Damien, the show has only been on for 40 seconds. Beautiful, buddy. Van nice. Wilder. Which oh, yeah. is uh, the new... Uh, Have you seen those trailers for that? It looks very funny. It's good. It's actually, yeah, the one of the best things I've ever been involved in. So it's, it's, I'm pretty excited about it, too. So. I, uh, Drew, stop kissing ass. But I no, seriously... I saw I... Somebody, um, Daniel from The Man Show. Executive discriminating. Producer, discriminating. Very right? discerning, very mm-hmm. discriminating. Yeah. Uh, piped up in the office today and said that uh, he read a good review mm-hmm. on it. Yeah, it's actually been, it's weird for a National Lampoon movie, which is what it is, to be, in, to, to, to be getting great reviews like this, such as, hmm. sort of nice, nice little, uh, nice little boost for us, I think, you know. Yeah, I wonder how uh, even something like Animal House was uh, reviewed back in 78 or 9, 9 79, yeah. It wasn't even, I don't think it was even reviewed, it just like it wasn't worthy of reviews. Yeah, it sort of caught on. on. I wonder. Yeah. Well, I is this how much? Uh, is this in that vein? Put, put the roof over the Christian coalition, perhaps. But uh, uh, this is in that vein. Yeah, this is in that vein, and sort of it's uh, it's kind of like a you know Ferris Bueller for the 21st century. If I'm going to give it a crappy log line, that's that that would be that would be what, how I describe it. But Bueller, uh, it's a, it's an it's a actually it's a hilarious hilarious Bueller. film, which is great. He's been on a uh, a radio and television junket. You can tell he's got all those. Yeah, I got the pizzazz going. Yeah. I don't have the VIP cup you're using now for your coffee there, though, nice. Drew. Uh, I like that. True I stuff. like that. I am long. I have been on a junket which makes you long for the sweet release of death <laughs> like no other. <laughs> Yeah, you do, you do those, uh, ra- you've been doing the radio junkets. I mean, not the ones uh, where you come into the studio, but the ones where you talk to 35 morning radio Yeah, shows. and you, well, you've done that, and I've done the, the you know, the, you get the five minutes a shot person that comes in, and there's the poster behind you, you know, and uh-huh. they're, 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 you know, they do the five, it's, there's the guy signaling behind, it's like a, being a stand-up or something, you get the red light going, it's, it's terrible. You don't know whether you've said the same thing to the same person three times. Yeah, I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. I'm just doing the, the whole thing in a serious interpretive dance <laughs> at this point. I, I, I I'm out. Anyway, it looks funny. Really, it's does. hilarious. It yeah, the movie. Good. The movie's actually great. It's the weirdest thing is being involved in something that I'm actually, you know, really, really uh, uh, proud to sort of promote, which is kind of a, a new thing for me. So, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely digging that. And it's, a, it's, it's a poon movie. The lampoon. We're and, back. Um, We're plenty of protection when you go. I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be a bit of a breakout uh, role. You for said that Ryan. last night. Yeah. Yeah, because Ryan is is a really is a he's good looking. He's young. He's slender. He's a <laughs> great comedic actor, and uh, there's no reason why he should not be a uh, sought after comedic leading man That's in good. this very, city. Very good. kind of you. Very kind. I, I, I definitely. This is this is coming from a guy who kicked my ass in MTV Rock and Jock Football the other day. Mm-hmm. I, I gotta say, I was no, like, two I, months ago, and a month ago, I don't know. I, I, you know, I watched that and realized I look like a retard. Oh, me too. I, it, I watched about two minutes of it well, I heard on the TiVo and killed it. One of my staff yeah. members at the ho- office mentioned that you, the highlight for her was when you said that, uh, of course, everyone watching Spring Break wants to see 35-year-old men with their shirt off. Yeah. Something to that effect. When did I say that? I don't know, but the people thought that was pretty good. Oh, well, that's good, yeah. but uh, that had nothing to do with Rock and Jock. Ah. It's very, yeah. it's very sad when you're the sport. I mean, I, that actually the only thing I ever had going for me was uh, that I was recruited to play football at the college level. Wow. And then I go watch myself on this MTV rock and jock thing, and I look almost spastic, and I realize now I have nothing. I don't know. You scorched me several times. I was, I was covering you. So you made I a great that. defensive play. Uh, Great defensive play oh, on me, by the way. Yeah. You didn't look like Lynn Swan. No, no. I, I, I look I like uh, Lynn Redgrave. Ah. Well, <laughs> well done, well done, <laughs> Thank well you. done. Yeah. Thank you. That's right. I have a sense of humor. I can fall back on that. Screw go, the, yeah. screw the sports. Safety net. 
Amanda? I, had, I had a feeling, by the way, yep. last yeah. night we ended up talking so much about gay sex. Remember mm-hmm. this? And so a lot of the yes. countries hearing last night's show tonight, so we're bound to talk about that again, I suspect. So prepare yourself, right? Okay. And I think Adam had one line that sort of summarized the whole night, his frustration and his anger and what he really wanted to learn about. Why is it? You why is, it, why is it always just snake eyes? That we can't know. ask a homo goddamn <laughs> question about his asshole and get a decent <laughs> answer? <laughs> that, so, hey, that was a prank. That was yeah. way out of well, concept. Hey, Adam, right? uh, hell, yeah, table for one. Okay. <laughs> so, well, tonight table we'll tackle these, 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 these highbrow the issues. Dungeon. Hey, you're a prick. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Amanda, 16. Oh. Hi. Uh, I was just wondering if, like, short guys usually have smaller dicks. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. No. Like all the short guys that I've been with, pretty much have smaller dicks. And yeah, I'm that like, maybe because the short guys you with are short because they're twelve. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're sixteen, and uh, they may not have finished developing it. Well, how how yeah. short? How many short guys have you been with? Just like it's not like I sleep with them. Just like if I suck their dicks, they're real small. Oh, I see. I oh. see. Ah, uh, hey, um, man, man, where'd you go to finishing school? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Wow, I want to. I want the number of your cotillion class, Princess Amanda. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, when's wow. the uh, dead ball? Yeah, Is that coming up. <laughs> Drew, how's it work? Do you have to register and you get a book of debutantes? Oh, yeah. Years and years of cotillion to get this kind of expression. Exactly. This year, walking through the line of swords. Yeah. <laughs> or just at least some like some etiquette book cliff notes or something. We can <laughs> sort that out. Uh, Amanda. Yeah. All right, now, baby. Now, how many guys would you say this uh, this just would be? Like- I don't know. Like, oh, hold on. See if you can answer this question without saying the word dick. How many guys? Three. Ooh. Three. Any of them named Richard? How old were these guys? Uh, uh, one was 16, and I think the other one was 17, one was 15. Uh, Amanda, maybe, um, maybe you've just set the bar a little too high. I mean, maybe you think the male phallus is larger than it actually is. Maybe these guys were average size, and you have greater expectations. Did you think about that? Well, I don't know. I've uh, sucked four guys' dicks before, but well, like... She couldn't okay. do it. She, she <laughs> just couldn't get through big. it, could you? One was big. Yeah. I just wanted to get some dick. Right, but that that would be one out of the four. So. 25%. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Be that as it may, um, one of the things that you've selected for is short guys, right? Yeah. And there's something called the pubertal growth spurt. That mm-hmm. some males get later, like 16, 17, 18. And actually, those are the guys that end up taller than everybody else, may, oftentimes. Okay. And they also haven't finished developing yet. Here's the taller guy. How, were you, how tall were you at 16? Um, I was actually really short at yeah. 16. Um, yeah. yeah. I hit the, puberty like last week. Right. The delayed pubertal growth spurt yeah. is when the penis grows and when the whole body grows up. And so you may be hitting guys uh, early in development. Okay. Right. And how right. short you, are we talking here? I mean, are we talking? You know, well, you could, was it? What is his leg? You were actually feeling? I, I can't it? handle it, Amanda, anymore. It's just okay. like, I've had enough. All right, easy, Amanda. Don't get yeah. pregnant now. Okay. And watch out for that growth spurt. Okay. It'll give you a pink eye <laughs> or any other spurt. Got it. Yeah. For the, I know you did the joke. I understand. Everybody. Yeah. Thanks, man. All right, Amanda. Send it out. Okay, thanks. Take care, there, baby. Bye. All right. And well, what about it, Drew? If 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 taller guys have mm-hmm. longer penises, and is that true? And wouldn't that make sense? And why not? I mean, taller guys have longer fingers. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. What is different about the penis as far as any other appendage in the body? Or what would be the same? Would tall, the taller guys have longer noses? Yeah. yeah. Do you what know about what the, I'm what saying? What about the yeah. fallacy of the, you know, the big feet thing? You know, yeah. You know, correlation there? You know? mm. Settle this once and for all. I got you don't know. I can't, no, I don't know. What, what, would it be safe to say that the penis is in proportion of the body? I mean, obviously, a dwarf has a smaller penis than a seven-foot guy. Would that be safe to say? No, oh, you really? better say that, I'm right on, on this one. Uh, an eight-counter plastic dwarf would have a normal-sized penis. I'd like to. I don't know. I've seen a lot of dwarf porn. Really? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you've seen thing, a lot of dwarf, dwarf porn. Dwarfs have normal torsos. Everything here is normal. They just the bones. They don't grow and they limp. Just limbs. Oh, okay. Well, how about a, a, a midget? midget? A midget would have smaller everything. Midget would okay, but that, okay, so that's what I'm saying. A midget is would have a smaller penis, and an NBA forward would have a larger penis. Remember, we heard about Shaq. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you hear about Shaq? It's a size what twenty one there. I don't we know. we heard he wasn't as big as uh, maybe you'd picture him being. Okay, but his <laughs> his, his his shoes are the size twenty one. Now I'm looking down at my baby kids, <clears throat> and I don't want to send out the wrong impression there. So let's just destroy this myth once. Well, look, all. He, here's what I think what we're saying about Shaq. Yeah. If Shaq has a ten inch dork, he's considered small. 
That's my point. And Drew, why, why, you, how long do you have to ponder this question? Because I remember that, the, that, that, that the a midget, that, that a midget it, it, penis would not be smaller than Shaq's penis. No, midgets would be. Or a dwarf. What you're asking, dwarf though, is... Not, oh, w- shut up. Wouldn't it be directly relative to the body, right? Yes, it would yeah, be relative. To to the, the Drew, body. I'm always right. You and this medical training, complete waste of time. <laughs> Please, everyone listening knows I'm right. Everyone listen to me. Seven-foot guy, come on. You would think, but I don't know that that's the case. Right. That, it's definitely not the case for dwarfs, so. though. Okay. Let me, I will. I got to see some dwarf... Dork now. All right. See, you're well, going to be you... so wrong when we're staring down the, the business end of one of those well, dwarf your, dorks. Your kind of video store is just opening right now. So after the show, dwarf dorks and such. Yeah. Mike? Hello? Yeah, my video store is open from uh, 10 15 till 4 in the morning. <laughs> wow. Mike? Yeah. You're 20. What's up? Um, question. I was just wondering, in your opinion, why do you think society gives females? At least it seems to me so much more freedom in exploring this sexuality than we give to males. You mean in terms of exploring it with each other? Yeah. Correct. Same well, sex. Well, you know, it's funny with the way he, uh, he phrased that. It made me think that it probably works out to be about the same because men get a ton of freedom exploring heterosexual relations without a lot of consequences, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And women don't get that kind of freedom as far as exploring heterosexual relationships, but they get a little more slack with the homosexual the relationship. Right. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, maybe it works out to be about the same freedom. Just a little bit from different categories. Yeah, they take from part A and part B, and we stick with part A, but it, at the end, maybe it's the same percentage. And the other thing, the other thing is... That you know what I'm saying, some, Mike? Yeah. Something we talked about last night not also. Not impressed, though, huh? No, of course not. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> we, something else we talked about last night, though, is that men don't tend to explore. You understand what I'm saying? That men, when they're going down that path, they're going because that's their path. And if they don't choose to continue down it because they don't want to deal with it, they can't... Okay, so they, there you go right there. You're saying men tend to explore if they're going down that path definitely? They don't return is what you're saying. They tend saying, to, yeah, they, yeah. You know what I mean? It's more of a commitment when they start going down that it's path. It's more of a, one of those uh, trap doors to hell but women <laughs> rather, than, that rather than, women, than a slow rope women ladder. Women snowball effect. Forget the societal influences. Women just have more fluidity with their sexuality. Men tend to be either one way or the other. And right. if they're one way, they have real difficulty imagining being another. Is that and, alpha issue? Or? Yeah, men, men have more fetishes than women, too. That's which true. is if, if, if a guy is a pedophile, he likes kids, there's not a lot of flexibility there. If he likes big jugs, like real men, there's not a lot of flexibility there. And if he wants to dress in women's clothing, there's not a lot of flexibility there. While women can easily go from, that guy, I really didn't think he was so cute until he became my friend. And then I got very attracted to him. He's a nice, you know, men, no, don't do that. Or you can have quiet nights godlessly masturbating to dwarf porn. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Drew, please, with Shaq and the dwarf and the same penis. How dare you. Jack? Yeah. You're uh, 35? Yes, I am. What's up? Uh, two things, really. Uh, one's a movie thing for you, but uh, for Dr. Drew, I got this uh, weird thing that the doctor told me I had called alopecia areata. Yeah, that's not so weird. It's very, very common. Oh. Is that where he picks at his hair? No, no, that's Pickerson. It's just a patch of hair drops out all of a sudden. Stress, right? It's stress, usually, yeah. or sometimes med- mental uh, medical illnesses. What is, what is it called when you pick your hair, though? Don't you call it something? Well, trichotillomania. Uh, pull your, uh, yeah, pull your yeah, hair. That's what I want to Pull your hair. Go ahead there, Jay. Well, the doctor said that, uh, well, basically he looks at me and tells me, well, yeah, you got it, but there really is no cure, and there, uh, according to websites I checked out, it said there's actually no cause to it. Uh, the body simply decides to quit growing. It attacks. No, no, it doesn't quit growing. It attacks. The immune system attacks the follicle, and a whole patch drops out. And t- Some dermatologists will do steroid injections into the skin, into the dermis. Right. But, uh, you know, it, it tends to come back by itself anyway. How long does it take for something like that to grow back? I don't know. Six months, three days. What's up, Jack? Are you? Are you? Are you uh, have you been fretting about something? Uh, just work is just a real bitch. I just work like a madman half the time. I practically live at work. What do you do? Uh, I work at a newspaper. Actually, put together uh, pages on computer. Oh, that 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 uh, deadline at the end of each and every day looming over you would just be brutal. Oh, I, I couldn't imagine doing that kind of work. I mean. It, it, we have this in 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 our business too, but it doesn't. It's not every single day. Mm. There's you know Ryan needs his movie completed by 
a certain Set date. Down. Exactly. And there's a lot of work that it takes to get to that date. And we do the man show, and they have to be taped and complete and so on and so forth. But it's not every single day. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's for right. You, you're, 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 there's you're no hiatus. Basis, yeah. They never wrap. Yeah, that's horrible. Well. So as far as this, just basically just go to the dermatologist and let them check me out. And I, I've heard of the cortisone injection. It doesn't work all that well, but if you're insisted on doing something, go ahead. Really, what you obviously need to do is to moderate your life a little bit. It doesn't seem to look... I've, see, I've seen people with this, actually. It doesn't seem to look ho- no, overly, usually, overly horrible. No, they don't, it's because it's, a, such a, it's a patch in yeah. a weird place. People can comb their hair over yeah. it really easily. Exactly. Exactly. Jack, don't you guys wear those paper hats, too, by the way, you guys on the line? Uh, Just our visor. Luckily, no, they actually wear the hat that's made out of the newspaper. Really? Well, then didn't they, didn't they, wasn't that old school, Jack? Leather visors, I thought. No? Uh, actually, both of those. Uh, every great once in a while, somebody will whip out one of those hats, but it's kind of like a hall. The hall guys on the hat. line would wear the paper hat, and then the other guys wear those green with the vi- yeah, exactly. visor. Yeah, hat. and they'd have the little band on their arm or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something yeah. out of Newsies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's Newsies. what we're picturing. Wow. There you go. All right, Adam, so... I had, I had a yeah. movie question for you. Yes. Sir. You're always talking about bringing back these things from the 70s. What about two guys or two people that are fighting over a gun... And they zoom up the camera lens right to their faces, and you hear that gun pow. You don't know who got it. Exactly. Yeah. We don't see enough of that. Yeah. What no, the that's hell true. are you guys talking we, we, about? We're trying to resurrect uh, um, Ooh, conventions, conventions, conventions from the 70s. Okay. Like, you know, people that have a wife who's a witch or a genie or something. You oh. can't let them use their powers. But okay. I, I thought of, uh, somebody mentioned something to me, somebody my age, the other day, I thought you'd appreciate this. She was talking about her kid or something. She goes, and you know, I must have ESP. I thought, oh, now there's three letters that no one in this room knows what that stands for. Yes. Well, yeah, oh, I do. We know. I do. This is a 70s thing. I oh, know, but... Sorry, I thought you were still talking about around that. I know. I'm saying. ESP, I don't hear about that anymore. Now no, I know. It's gone. Now it's all kinds of th- other things, but not ESP. Yeah. Marms. Marms. I like the second Darren on Bewitched, by the way. Yeah, yeah no, much better. Yeah. Much better. His hair was drier. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk to uh, Karen, who's 32. Karen? Hi. Hey. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Jimmy Kimmel was on the program substituting for Adam. No, no good substitute, but still pretty good. He sounded good to me. I, I heard him. Yeah, uh, I like the I Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, funny uh, guy. We we still prefer Adam uh, more. Thanks, baby. But, um, y'all were talking Whatever. about <laughs> y'all were talking about uh, egg donation. Mm-hmm. And um, I think the kind of the general question that was going around was between y'all was uh, what it was like to go through one. I've been through two of them. And I uh, want to just kind of share just the very basics of what it's like to go through an egg donation. All right. Um, first, you go to the clinic, of course. You sign up. Let them know you want to do it. Um, then All right. Hold on a second. Do you sign your name go or you put your Social Security number? Yes. In? Now, do you have to have no, you, give your phone number? You go in. You, you fill out an application. Oh, okay. Applica- Adam, write that down. Go to clinic. clinic oh, out. shut up, Drew. Come on. There's only room for one prick on this show. Now get to the part where they harvest the egg, please. Well, you once you get chosen by a couple regarding your profile, mm-hmm. and uh, the clinic calls you, lets you know, they you go in and you get, they told me it was almost $4,000 worth of hormone drugs. Mm-hmm. That's that over true. the next three weeks, something like three times a day, you sh- give yourself injections. Right. Well, injections this, this, listen, Karen, Karen, this is how they harvest eggs in anybody. It's not as though just because you right. were donating. This is a standard procedure. Right. Okay. All right. So you well, get sti- yeah. you get you stimulate the ovaries. You take the GnRH and you harvest. Right. Okay. What kind of harvesting did you have? Did you go through the vag- vaginal wall or did you have a laparoscopy? Um, they went vaginally. Okay. Up was that was that down. was that painful or unpleasant? Um, actually, they put you out for it, and it only takes about thirty minutes. But once I woke up, I was kind of nauseous, mm-hmm. and then also for the next few days, I was very uncomfortable in my you know the area of my uterus, my mm-hmm. ovaries. Okay. Why Why did you donate these eggs, or did you sell That's them, or how does that work? Partially uh, for the money, partially for, you know, I, I'm very fertile. I, I already had two children since this. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, you know, it, it makes you feel good to be able to do something like that for right. someone who can't have children. Right, so you donated think, them for the money. Partially for the money. Right. I think if the okay. money was not a factor, they wouldn't even offer it. But I, I think they know that money makes a difference. Right, all right, how, how much can you get? And does that depend on your pedigree? I think it depends on the city you're in. I have talked to other people about it, and I've heard, like, out in California where y'all are, it, they get a lot more here in Denver. Right. The first donation is you can only donate up to three times. 
um, it's for anyone at any time at any clinic. It's something about the, the increase. How much did you uh, get for it? The first donation, you get 3000 mm -hmm. The second do and third donations, you get 3500 for each. Whoa, that's a lot of cash, though, for that. No, Think about dropping an egg. A woman pays, you do pay taxes on it, though, but it's a different I see. tax bracket than you pay your regular income because it's not considered a guaranteed income. I so see. You, you I pay oh, it's not guaranteed, meaning they... There's no, you can't sit there and know that someone will definitely pick you. Oh, somebody has to pick you, so... So right. I see, I see. Oh, and in order for you to get the, oh, wow. well, hold on a second. She got thirty five hundred. She thinks uh, Denver's got a uh, bear market for the yeah, uh, bit of a or bull market for the uh, eggs. Whereas uh, L A, but low uh, grade. Of I'm guessing it was the GED and the missing front tooth that uh, knocked her price down just a little bit. Oh, hey, uh, Karen. Yeah. No. What what qualifies you? Are you uh, you over five five? Um, actually, I'm five eight and a half. I weigh well at the time. I'm pregnant right now, actually. Good but times. At the time, I weighed 132 pounds. I'm mm -hmm. very slender built. Um, what are they looking I'm for? Are they looking for uh, education? Is there a picture uh -huh. thing, or is it? Yeah, do I'm they have really a picture, sure picture of you? They must have a picture uh, yes. of you. Yes, they do have a picture. They have a physical profile, your genetic profile. Mm -hmm. yeah. they ask you a bunch of questions. So if I was getting eggs well, from someone, I'd, I'd put them through like an astronaut training sort of regimen. Put them on the centrifuge thing and spin like them that. around. The clinic I went yeah. to get have them. them. I put them in a shut up. Put them in a, like a oxygen deprivation and have them solve puzzles see what quickly. They can, yeah, see, see. <laughs> <laughs> brain work. <laughs> Do that thing. Works. That thing out of like officer and a gentleman where we slam slam the F-14 cockpit down into the tub and they have to get out. They have to get out of their four-point harness and swim to the surface. See how they respond the to verbal abuse? <laughs> That's right. From Adam Carolla. Your last easy day was yesterday, you little egg donor. The drop give me 20. And I'll you give you 5000 Yeah, You love fun, the man. clinic, don't you, son? <laughs> <laughs> you refer to me in a clear and present tone. Not the money you use to con drug money out of your liberal parents, son. Yeah. <laughs> and scene. Where do you come from? Omaha. They only got two things in Omaha. Steers and queers. <laughs> Wait a minute. What rhymes with lesbian? What animal rhymes with lesbian? Thesbian? No. Hey, yeah. hey. All right. <laughs> I want you to address me in a clear and present tone. Not the voice you use to con drug money off of your liberal parents. Thank you. The clinic I went to gave us something called the MMPI. Mm -hmm. um, I bet Dr. Drew knows what it's, that it's is. It's a personality profile, basically. Correct. I see. It's like oh. 600 true-false questions. Mm -hmm. All right. and, um, I, that, that's I, probably I, more to see if you can tolerate the egg donor procedure. To see if you can make a mountain out of mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, All right, Karen. So you got, you got two kids and one on the way. Same husband? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, baby. All right. Good All right. times. And and is he uh, selling his sperm, or is it just you who's uh, family? the breadwinner? I mean. No, just me. All right, baby. Wow. Take care of yourself. Well, thank you. Thanks, Thanks for the call. Bye. Yeah, Bye. yeah I, I don't know what the... Would that freak you out at all? I mean, obviously, we're not women. We don't have eggs, but morally. Yeah. Is that, I, I'm not bothered by it, mm, but I, I'm trying to think forget, if I would be freaked not out. Not morally. Not morally, but it's freaky to think that you might... Run across someone that reminds you of your kids in some like yeah, explicit that's way. That's what I think too. Like, I mean, whoa, wait because that's minute. that is the deal, right? I mean, you're, basically, you're, you donate your eggs; they are injected into someone else. Yeah, your and brain that does is growing your child. Yeah, the brain has this weird thing with that. It's like you want to go get it. Then <laughs> you want to go. Yeah, take that. It, I'm so it. I go to the I go to the whole other level of that thing in Alien that like it's just not yours and it's just First flying out of you. Stomach? Yeah, I don't know. I just think it's not it's not your is DNA. The, it's is that what a C-section's like, Drew? No. Oh, absolutely. Oh, they wow. hold you down on a table when they're eating <laughs> space bars and tang, and the like stick flies out of your pal. Oh, yeah. Well, I had well, an ex girlfriend that did that face thing, metaphorically, well, of course, but. Really? Yeah. Did the, did the alien face? <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. Hey, good Drew. Times there. Uh, forgot what I was going to ask. Well, here's the thing you need the sperm. So it's sort of like half done, and you'll never, it'll never be exactly like your kids because right. obviously the husband is not the same. But it still donor. could be enough that it could be weird. <clears throat> All right, agreed. We'll take a little break. Ryan Reynolds is our guest tonight. Van Wilder's coming out on the uh, 5th of April. It's supposed to be good. We'll be back. Hey, everybody. Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. Ryan Reynolds is our guest tonight. Hello. You know, <coughs> you know Ryan. I'm actually just waking up now. There we go. 
Hi. You know Ryan from uh, all those years on Two Guys, a Girl, and the Pizza Place, yes. and uh, that's where we first met. I was also the little black kid on Different Strokes. Hmm. You yeah. Know me from Quite that. a range. Yeah. <laughs> it's range. Bang, cymbal crash right there. And uh, he is uh, now starring in, uh, I believe it's his first uh, starring role in a major movie, Van Wilder, National Lampoon's Van Wilder, which is uh, coming out on the 5th of April. And that is a uh, week from this Friday, correct? You bet, yeah. <clears throat> You've all seen the commercials, lots of toga stuff, and uh, good reviews. Yes, very good. Adam? Yeah. You're 16? Hey, how you doing? What's up? Hey, Adam. Uh, I'm all right. Um, I actually wanted to ask you a question first. Mm-hmm. Um, I was watching The Mantra the other day, mm -hmm. and uh, I saw you were golfing. Yes. And you were golfing left-handed. Right. You're saying golfing? Golfing. No, he said golfing. The ball. Yes. Yeah, you were doing that left-handed. Yes. You're left-handed? I know it doesn't look like I'm left-handed when you watch me golf, but uh, yes, I am left-handed. I didn't know that. Well, thank you, Adam. All right, but I, I'm not one of these people that uh, scribes a bunch of crap, like, oh, that's where I get my creativity or yeah. any of that nonsense. Yeah. It, it's a curse, this no, left handed just I didn't know. Thanks, buddy. Go yeah. ahead. Um, yeah, I have this problem. My, uh, I think my, my hand, uh, well, I, uh, it, it hurts. The tip of my finger does, the, my uh, pointer finger. Let's say bogus. Hmm. Why does it hurt? Um, I think, I don't know. It's because I've been masturbating mm -hmm. kind of like chronically and you've sprained your finger it's not a sprain i don't i don't know what it is it's just like a pain i, I, I bogus. smell bogus i yeah, smell no, bogus no, no, on this why, no, why would you think of this i mean it's such a bizarre yeah, complaint uh, it's bogus. just the case adam yeah this is about two minutes we're never gonna get it back <laughs> but listen the the tip like near the fingernail uh-huh hurts y yeah it's like it's in, like inside I, I don't know like an aching feeling is and there's nothing to see there's nothing to swelling right. or redness right. or anything hmm are your wrist okay my wrist is fine, yeah. And does, does the pain doesn't radiate or come from anywhere? It's, it's just like a really, really sharp pain, and it's occasional, too. Now, well, is that is that the finger that goes on your penis, or is right. that the one that goes in your ass? I, I don't do that. Oh, you're not into that? <laughs> no. But he, well, but he wants to know if you're left-handed. <laughs> it's probably nothing, yeah. Adam, but there's a million and one things that can cause joint pain in the hands. Oh, really? So. Yeah, and it has nothing, I doubt, to do with your habits. All right, because I just didn't want to stop. No, you yeah. don't have no, to stop. No, I didn't say you should stop. You can enhance masturbation actually with the other hand. Really? Wow. Yes, sure. by holding sure. a magazine. Yeah. Oh. No, you're saying by using that, sure. using yeah, that other hand? Around, you know, just for a change. Going out and right yeah. I keep promising myself I'll do that, but I never end up doing it. Yeah, I know. I'm going to use, I'm going to go, see, I'm left-handed. I'm going with, I'm going to go with the right next time. Yeah. I'm going to try that, see what that's like. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean to not be romantic or anything, but I just want to get that over with as soon as possible. So, yeah, I stick with the, I'm right-handed, I stick with the right. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm pretty much, you know you're committed to the left hand when, do you remember when I had the hand surgery? Yep. Do you remember the novelty size cast I had on my left hand? Oh, I remember you fretting about having that cast and how you were going to manage. I mean, it was not, it did not look like the kind of cast that you get when you break your wrist. It was a giant club. It really? was a club. Yeah. And it was, it was wrapped. It really, it looked like, um, like you see those 70s football films. Yeah. And, the you know, I was just going to say, the guys that had the club Otis cast Sistrunk over Otis yeah. Sistrunk uh, has a forearm cast, and then they wrap a bunch of uh, or, foam rubber around it and, and white tape. And the, I mean, it was, it was a club. Managed to beat off with the club. You managed wow. to get yes, with the I, club, and you didn't, you know, let, break you know something why? Because or I'm lose a, an because entire I'm testicle? Because I'm a warrior. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's why. Resilient. Wow. That's an incredibly why. resilient warrior, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Max? Yeah. <clears throat> you're 24. What's up? Uh, I have a question about a fetish. I don't know if it's a or more of an obsession. I've been married for about four years, and I've had this, this long-term obsession with wanting to see my wife with another man. And you've had that just since you've been married? Excuse me? That's just been since, since you've been married or before? Uh, no, just pretty much since I've been married. And did you uh, ever have this with anyone else? Yeah, I was I was married previously for mm. about a year and a half, and I actually uh, went through with it, talked my first wife into it. We both enjoyed it, kind of got a kick out of it. And that was the end of the marriage? Yes. Oh, shy. Amazing. I've, I recently brought it up to my to my new wife. You got, you got to destroy this marriage too, yeah, Max. Looking to unload some weight or what? Mm -hmm. what? What's the deal? Didn't you learn how this works? Uh, actually, that's not the reason we split up. I mean, we were just at the time we were both kids and we were looking to try anything, and we both enjoyed it. So 
How uh, how how long after you enjoyed it did you split up? Uh, probably about a half. Year and a half, they say. How long? Year and a half. About a year and a half. Year and a half. Right. Hey, uh, Max. Yeah. Well, first off, let me talk to my people about something. Let me tell you one of the cornerstones of being stupid. You just keep doing the same effing thing uh-huh. over and over again. I have to say uh-huh. so, yeah. Whether, whether it be getting fired from jobs or drinking or heroin or wife swapping or whatever it is, you don't learn from your mistake. I mean, if you really think about sort of what stupid is and how people have horrible lives, well, it's not the uh, mistake part. Calm down, Drew. Uh, Everybody makes mistakes. And it's not even making them twice. It's it's repeating the patterns. And I know as a doctor, you don't want to call that stupid. You well, wanna, it's not you a cognitive give it, you issue. Get a name, you want to put a name to it. Yeah, but smart people at a certain point realize, even though I, I'm compulsed to do this, I will stop. Well, the, you have to have the capacity for insight. There you which go. Which is different than smart. Though. Not really. It's just a quality that's Well, look, don't if have. you want to talk hmm. about the difference between... You know, Smart was all encompassing. Chinchillas huh? and people. It's the insight. No, I mean, listen, schizophrenics have no insight, and they get Nobel Prizes for... True, you're you know watching too many movies. But that's, that's we're true. plugging they, Van Wilder. Uh, yeah. You understand? But the point is that, that insight is a separate neurologic function that people do or don't have. And it has, it has to do with... I was just listening, reading some stuff about this tonight with the way they're taught to match emotions with their parents early in life. If the, if the child, when they're trying to regulate their own emotional lives, reaches out to the mom to try to get some reassurance, and the mom doesn't match or, or perceive accurately the child's feelings, there's a mismatch, and the child never learns how to, how to identify their own feelings, identify them in other people. They so, don't have that insight. Are you saying this is what uh, may have happened with uh, Max? Could be. Been a year and a half, though, after he... <clears throat> hey, Max... Yeah, I you know I I identify with uh, that feeling. I think uh, all guys have it to some degree. Don't have it. Drew doesn't have this. I do. Mo- most I, I, I no <laughs> no no. It, it's not. It's 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 it's. Here's what I mean. It's it, I I would liken this. Your uh, old lady getting it on with another guy while you witnessed it. I would liken it to killing, in the sense that. Some guys think about killing people. Some guys sort of fantasize about it. Most guys would never do it. Yeah. But it runs through your head sort of thing. And then a small percentage of people actually go through and do it. This is sort of that for guys. A lot of guys think about their woman with another guy or even even especially when they get loaded fantasize about it or what have you. But they don't go through with it. And I would say it's just about as pathological as going ahead and killing someone. It, you, really? you, you would say that person is, a, a, yeah, has got a. Dis- you you would rather sit. It through that, you'd rather that sit next to someone on a plane flight, who actually killed someone, mm, or who gave uh, up their it'd wife. Be a small. Hey Max, small really? Yeah. Wow. Max, this this is a, an impulse that uh, you need to get under control and not act out on. Okay, well, see, that was that was my main question. Was obviously, first of all, am I alone in having this feeling? No, other guys, and other guys have this, but no, we, the other guys don't do this. Most and other guys don't, don't, and do they it. don't obsess about it. And second of all, was it because I recently brought it up to my new wife, and you know she refused and thought I was crazy, pretty much for asking about. Yeah, that well, no, I wouldn't bring it up again. Then she's she's healthier than you are. That's why. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hey, Max. Yes. Let me. Uh, do you have any kids? Uh, yes, actually, I have two children. All, All right. right. Well, okay. now you cannot do this because this is a tantamount to child abuse. It really is. You're going to screw this relationship up. You don't need daddy carrying on this way. You got to start acting like a dad now. You oh, understand? I understand. I mean, I, I I consider myself a great father. And, I know, you but know, you you wouldn't others. you would not be a good father if you if you carried out this plan. Okay. Okay. And, and, and listen, everybody, uh, it's it's all about just containing your ass. That's what? true. That's right. It's no, it, we, the 30 years we went through, hey, let it all hang out, whatever you're into. Yeah. Even last night we heard some of that stuff. Whatever floats your boat. No. No. Well, there's this sort of notion which is, hey, if you want to do something, it can't be wrong. Well, yeah. Do you know what I mean? What I wonder, though, is, is just him bringing it up to his wife if he's not already fulfilled half of his fantasy. There. Well, he's, I mean, he's already you know. gotten the kind of injected a little chaos into the relationship, hey, which is which what is, he's looking for. Yeah, yeah. But did you, did you hear the resistance in his voice? I'm a great father. And, yeah. and when you said no to be a good father, he was like, <sighs> like you don't understand. Wait, no, I, I, thought he, I thought he went along with it. Okay. Look. Ask him. He, ask him. Okay. Ask him what he intends to do. What do you mean? Mm. Max? 
Yes. What do you What do you intend to do? Do you intend to pursue this, or are you going to drop it? I. I I don't know. I mean, see what I'm okay. saying? You see right. what I'm saying? Hey, Max, Max, the, the, you you do it, and you will uh, you will then become a uh, a bad person. You are an asshole. Well, he, 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 all right, he, he, just uh, do what you want to do. Understand what what the consequences are, and uh, you know, don't don't tell us we didn't warn you. I do agree okay, with you. So, years from now, so if I decide not to do it, and I still think about it, I mean, is that wrong or just no? It, no, it makes you through. makes you a better person, really. It means something. Yes, but everybody needs to contain themselves. Look, I, I would like to uh, defecate on the sidewalk when I have to go number two. <laughs> but I excuse myself to a hedge or a gas station parking lot. Or a glass like, coffee table. Or a glass coffee table <laughs> with Danny Thomas <laughs> underneath it. Jesus. Because... Is he still alive, by the way? Oh, Be- because Burl died today. Milton Burl died today, yeah. I know. Uh, now comedy's dead. Mm-hmm. And, so and Dudley Moore. Pretty much is... To, to fantasize is the best thing. Yes, to yes. To that's well, right. That's right. Mm. Now, let me let me say this. Uh, there's a sort of notion which is, hey, if you're not hurting anybody physically, then... Two and, consenting adults. And two consenting adults agree to it, then, then chase your muse, man, and do whatever you want. Well, here's the deal. It's the two consenting adults, and a lot of people would argue, I mean, chronologically, they're adults. Emotionally, they're not adults. And there's two kids whose lives they're putting in serious psychological jeopardy That's right. here. you got That's a right. delicate ecosystem no, that he's working with. Absolutely he's right. Screw that up. That absolutely. Right. Yeah. And, and look, you want to know what successful people do? And uh, then I'll stop being so preachy. They don't do everything they want to do all along the way. There is a huge problem in this country understanding the difference between self-will me doing it because I want to, and freedom. When, right. you, when you are acting out BS like this guy is, that is not self-will. No. That is a slave. I mean, Andrea Yates was self-willed. She didn't want to take her medications. She didn't want to go to a psychiatric hospital. She relinquished her freedom because of all that, and now five kids are dead. This guy is screwing up equally as badly. Right. Because well, of his maybe self-will. maybe not quite equally. Well, but, it hmm. might get there. Where where he... Uh... Well, he's only got the two kids, so still could never be be as bad as Andrew. Okay. Okay. We're going to take a little break. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is our guest tonight. Everyone should have uh, alliteration in their names. It's so much easier. Yeah, my middle name's Rodney, actually, as well. Oh, really? Yeah, frightening, isn't it? Yeah, it works perfectly, though. Drew, Dr. Drew. Yeah, that's good. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew over there. Ryan Reynolds is our guest tonight. Hello. I think Ryan's the first guest ever to pick the mic up like we do. Yeah. Really? He's a cool customer. I'm trying to be like the pros here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely trying to be like the pros. It's actually very comfortable resting. Well, yeah, nicely you're, you're, heavy. And you're tired. You're working all day. Yeah. That doing synapses are not firing the way they should. That's why we're drinking coffee here. He's doing uh, the uh, legal Coke. Real big, real big promotion for Van Wilder, which is uh, coming out on the 5th. A week from this uh, Friday, National uh, Lampoons, and it's been yes. doing... Uh, Doing doing the radio junket probably yes. uh, and probably TV on the morning at the times and six probably on yeah. But the other thing he did was you know he was telling us the, the thing where he sits in a booth with the poster behind him and E. T. and the Hollywood just, yeah. and the cameras come in one. They get they get the, like a five minute rap and then fire. local news from Shreveport and Omaha right yeah. everybody comes through yeah. and get their also booster. known as B material at that point and You're uh, on the B material is on at like six forty five this morning with uh, Boomer and the Nudge yeah <laughs> coming to you from Nesta hey Nudge get up hey let me tell you something man. Ryan yeah. Reynolds coming out there coming out there he's uh, uh, Van Wall I tell you this flick looks real funny I haven't seen it or read anything about it I tell you it looks, it looks hilarious right now I'm coming to tell you it's going to weather report out there and I'll, t- I'll tell you what uh, by the way call number three is going to give themselves a bottomless bucket of scooter bread from Mezzo's Pizza down there on I-15 so head on down there in the Leaning Tower of Pepsi. Uh, it's, like right. that, it's, it's like that, except except you're way more coherent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, you know, you, I, am, I am following the bouncing ball with you, my friend. Two guys and girls. Mm. I'll, tell you, yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell you that uh, blonde hair chick. What is her name? Trailer trash? Ooh, trailer yeah, park? Yeah, yeah. The hot, hot, hot. I'll tell you what I'm saying. Then their head pops off and confetti flies out of their neck. <laughs> am I right? Just no, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mark? 
Yeah. Hey, guys. Hi, Mark. You're 25. I have been listening to you guys for like seven years. You guys have taught me so much. Great. You're amazing. Have we been on the air seven years there? I, don't I think so. In Denver? Oh, my God. <laughs> Mark, what's going um, on? What my problem is, um, this question is actually for Dr. Drew. Yeah. I have premature ejaculation problems. I only last about two, maybe five minutes a lot of the time. Good times. You got me beat. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not really good times. Um, Talk to my doctor. He prescribed Zoloft for it. Yeah. Um, 25 milligrams daily. Okay. I went to the pharmacist to get it filled. The pharmacist pulled me aside to say this can have a lot of different side effects mm. that I might not like, like decreased libido, um, possible impotence, things like that. Did the pharmacist know why you were taking it? Yeah. In fact, they even were kind enough to write it on the bottle. Write what on the bottle? Um, sexual dysfunction. Sweet. Wow. So Gosh. even though he knew that you were taking it for that purpose, he pulled you aside to tell you that that might happen to you? Um, like the other parts, like the decreased libido. Well, uh, that's kind of the point in a, in a certain yeah, way. You, uh, it's oftentimes with the delayed ejaculation, decreased libido comes along, particularly with Zoloft. Is Zoloft an antidepressant, though? Yeah. They're all, anti- they're all antidepressants. They're prescribed for everything. I mean, it's going to well, fix your lawn in a while. A I very, mean. very common side effect of Paxil, Prozac, Zoloft, Celexa is a diminished sexual drive or some some suppression of some part of the sexual arousal mechanism. Yeah. And delayed ejaculation is one of those things. So it's considered a treatment for premature ejaculation. But okay. Paxil, in my experience, is more... You know, Zoloft does more for the desire. Paxil does more for the ejaculation, in my experience, anyway. Well, so have if you this tried it, Mark? Um, no, I just got the prescription today and heard all these side effects and panicked. Well, any oh. medicine you take is going to have side effects, face it. Okay. And if this is that, my suggestion to you is if you want to find a non-medicinal approach, find a way to sort of get contain your own sexual function. Yeah, but it, to masturbate me, more or whatever it is you need to do to make this thing work would, mechanically. Wouldn't, wouldn't you want to get, would, I mean, wouldn't you want to try this out anyway just because, I mean, if it, the worst the worst case scenario here is that you have sexual dysfunction, meaning, you know, you, your, your, your libido's decreased. I mean, you know, this as side effects go, this is an explosive diarrhea. I'm right. thinking like so this is side from this really isn't that bad if you're, you know, mild. yeah, quite and if mild. you if it is bad, you just go off of it. I think yes, that's the best that, way to learn. I think that's correct. And when you have uh, decreased libido, it, how bad is that to the person that has the decreased libido? And we always talk about this with women. With men, it's like, all right, you don't feel horny tonight. So you watch some TV and go to bed. It's I mean, a relief for men. Women, women though, it gets really shut down. The sex seems like irritating. Like, what is that? I don't understand what that is. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah. Let's just, <laughs> Francis. That's just with you. Yeah. You're uh, 16? Yes. You're a uh, um, female, yes? My mother left when I was 10, mm-hmm. and I haven't really been really open about it to anybody. But over the past couple of years, my first relationship I had for a year and a half, and then I dumped him, and ever since then I've been with about four guys for about two month time periods. And lately, I was just wondering, could that be an effect of my mother leaving and me feeling? And like I miss my boyfriend terribly, or my ex boyfriend, I should say, for the year and a half, and I broke up with him. Yet I feel that he broke up with me, and I miss that relationship. You mean you happened. you have a delusion that he broke up with you in when in fact no. you broke up with him? Well, like, I know that I broke up with him. Like, I know that. But it it just... But he was giving you signs it was over before, and that's why he broke but up. But you see, you're recreating this abandonment from your mom, right? Your mom left. It was, it was a horrible rupture. Yeah, and now you, you start getting close to someone, and the thing you fear most is that he'll leave. So rather than go through that, you get rid of him. And then once you've gotten rid of him, you believe he left just like your mom. Kind of, yeah. I like I know that I did that. I understand. Like, I know Th- I this did. is this is a, a time for therapy, Francis. You really got to get get out of this. Cycle. Like, I had that when she left, but like I got out of it because I was like, there's no point in it. Yeah, you got out. You suppressed it, and now you're acting it out with your relationships. And and when and when you instant, you're going one of two ways. You're with lots of people you don't care about as a way of trying to mask any kind of real connection, or you make a real connection and then you sabotage it. Yeah, I was, another question. Would it be possible that I could turn out like her because she had an alcohol? Uh, did, she was a, really addicted to alcohol. Fifty percent, roughly fifty percent probability you're going to get that. Okay. So okay. again, Francis, you know, if you have that predilection, that gene, and you have this major abandonment, mm-hmm. and God knows that's probably what her mom did to her, I suspect. Gets. Well, no, actually, no. My grandparents are a perfect couple, and I'm very close to my grandparents. And those are her parents. Yeah, they're her parents. Where is she now? Why hasn't she been in your life? 
Your mom. Um, as far as I know, I think she's in California, but she doesn't keep in contact. You with know what? All. Not perfect parents. No way. Something's up. Yeah, something's up with her parents. Well, but, but well, but, I mean, I don't know. My grandparents don't talk to me about that much, but I know that she was a troublemaker when she was my age. All right. Well, they're good grandparents anyway, and that's nice. But mm -hmm. you need to get some professional help to get to get this sort of dealt with, so it doesn't become a chronic feature of your relationship. Stay away from the booze if you know that. You know, if you know well, that like, you have a predisposition. I, like I just like just tried it over the past couple of weeks, and now it just seems that like right. I, I want to get I want to do it again. Get help. Uh -huh. All right, yeah. this, okay. this isn't going to stop unless you get a, a real real relationship going, and okay. so you're going to sabotage the ones you have with boys. So you need a therapist. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right, baby. Take care Bye. of yourself. I think. Yeah. What do you think? Zoloft? Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't hurt. I don't know. Uh, I got a hangnail. Let's Taking it for that. The boyfriend is 21 and lasts about a minute. Just uh, on that topic. Just finish that topic really? out. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, Lisa. Yeah. Give him some Zoloft. <laughs> give me some Zoloft? Yeah. You heard that call. Maybe you didn't hear the call. We had yeah. A call. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What's, uh, what's going on with your boyfriend? It looks just like equal. <laughs> what's up with your boyfriend? Uh, when we have sex, he lasts about a minute. Mm. What was that? I don't know, but it was painful. Mm. So let's just tell her with her on hold. Is he troubled by this? Are you asking me? Yeah, I will need to know if it's something he's willing to work on. I I'm guessing he is. <laughs> Drew, why <laughs> don't we you need to talk give to him. the goddamn answer like he's willing to work on it? Right, he needs to l probably masturbate more, actually. Okay. He needs to learn how to master his own sexual function. And look, he better he better learn he better learn to give her good oral. Yeah. Because that's the only salvation. That's here. the other thing. That's this is not gonna work. I meant that too, yeah. Okay. We'll take a quick break. Ryan Reynolds is our guest tonight. We'll be right back. There we go. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Pat O'Brien will be in here tomorrow night. Oh, for the love of God. You know from, uh, well, he's writing our demo. <laughs> yeah. Pat is is going to replace Dick Clark as the world's oldest teenager. <gasps> in just a, just a couple of uh, couple of short months. Pat wow. does, uh, well, Pat does, has been doing this, what, CBS Sports for a million uh, he's years. He's still and, my favorite uh, baseball announcer. Great baseball yeah. announcer. And then he became, you know, Access, Access Hollywood. Hollywood. Is it Access yeah. Hollywood that he does? Yeah. But, uh, Pat is the biggest a star effer on the planet. <laughs> he like hangs out with with Michael Jordan and uh, even big names that are dead, like uh, Humphrey Bogart. He no. hangs around with every huge Milton Berle. He's now hanging right there, out with. Yeah. He uh, he loved my movie, so I got I got. Did he? I got to give the props to Pat. O'Brien. Did he uh, yeah. say something on Access Hollywood? He was saying stuff a lot on Access Hollywood about it. So really? Yeah, he loved it. They they loved it at Access. So I have to you know. Oh, that's love great. Those guys, yeah. Well, he'll be in here tomorrow. We'll ask him about it. Ryan Reynolds is uh, the man who's speaking into the third mic. Hi that's there. Uh, his movie, Van Wilder, which is uh, coming out on the fifth of April. Yeah. All right, and uh, getting good reviews, Joe. Yeah. You're 27? Yeah. What's hey, up? Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Good. Dr. Drew, I have a question for you. Joe. Uh, I am a paramedic yep. uh, in Northern California, and we are just seeing a huge increase in GHB overdoses, especially in the homosexual community. Hmm. And no one can really give me, you know, I've asked doctors at the ERs we transport to and uh, public health, and they really can't give me an answer. I was wondering if this is local phenomena or is this something that we're seeing nationally and uh, what can be done? There definitely is a steady increase in ER visits for GHB and ecstasy and ketamine. Okay, and, that, and GHB particularly is in sort of an explosive uh, pattern right now. I was talking to, we're, how close to San Francisco are you? Uh, very close. I was talking to the head of the Haight-Ashbury Free Clinic who said that he thinks GHB, particularly coming across the border from Mexico, is sort of the big headline right now. Mm -hmm. And that there's a lot of use for of it uh, at universities as a date rape drug. But that that's the drug he sees the most rapid increase in problems with right now. So it's it's being distributed more regularly. It's coming up. And kids are using it. So naturally enough, you'd start seeing more side effects and more disasters. Yeah. As far as right. the homosexual community, everyone's gay. I actually... In San Francisco, are they not... <laughs> Is that a gay colony or are well, the straight that, guys living? Right, so you're seeing a GHB in San Francisco, therefore. Yeah. No, we're actually right, right. In northern, in San, northern San Francisco, but yeah. I see. It, 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 I don't know if it's just. They like uh, the country, too. Well, I, w I would guess, as far as the gay community goes, whether it be drugs, music, or fashion, that it's a, a fairly small community that communicates. And so if something gets hot, it's going to get hot throughout the community, whether it be a, a dance song 
Or, uh, you know, they all know what's going on. You know, they know that the uh, brown bandana in the left pocket means uh, receiver and uh, oh, pink crap. bandana. Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, <laughs> you what, th- I, what am I thinking? You thought it was giver. Oh. You're, you're wondering what happened in the bathroom uh, with Anderson? Yeah. yeah. You, know, I'm, <laughs> you thought that was a little out of line? No, I'm hanging out. I wanted to look like one of the dancers from the bad video. I don't <laughs> know what's going on. Joe, I've seen know. a fair amount of GHB in uh, Major League Baseball players, too. It's that sure. And I bet we'll see it in the NFL also. You've seen it with some kickers in the NFL, too. I, 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 yeah. I want to ask you something. Um, there, there's, there's a funny thing that's going on. In, I was just in Mexico. Oh, for you're the, talking for the, about uh, J- the Jerk Jovanovsky. Jim, Jim or Jim Jim yeah, I don't know. Right. J- 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 from yeah, the Raiders. Whatever, yeah. True. What do you mean, what do you mean w- in baseball? I know we've talked about this, but uh, talk about it again. You mean in, in smaller doses being used as a supplement? I think, I think what's happening is they're using it in a supplement. And for those guys that are addicts and maybe don't even know it. They're just genetically prone. It takes off, and they become addicted yeah, to it. Yeah, but how do you get high off it? You it's take like a larger a, dose? Yeah, yeah I mean, a blackout a, a drug? Half, a, a half a, a Dixie cup is about 10 beers. I know, but why is it being used... Is it being used as a supplement, or is it just being used as a, as a you're way wine, to wine sports. Up? Wine both, sports. Both. Yeah. Wine I, sports, because it starts out as a supplement. Yeah, okay, that's what... Right. Drew, you understand what I'm asking And, here, I, and I, I'll say it again. Ten it's, beers... I'll start out again. It starts out as a supplement, and then it, they find out, they get used to its effects and find out how to modulate their Well, yeah, that's what it. I'm saying, but smaller... Smaller doses, right? It's a supplement, but they, they right, get bro. out of control. All with right, it. I'm done with you. All right, the major label are not using small doses. They, they take big doses, big, huge so doses. It's like drinking ten beers before I, they I, work I, out. I, what I have seen is these guys they get manic and they get disorganized, and in the guys that become addicted, they don't get sedating effects from it. They actually get stimulating effects. Uh huh. So it's not All like right. drinking ten beers. It initially is. But now they, I just want to know something. This is coming from Mexico. It, I, I was just in Mexico in Cancun for the little MTV spring break thing. That's not considered Mexico. By not the way. really. Yeah, but I was. I learned one thing when you're there. You can get anything in the normal the pharmacy there. Sure. Yeah, you could like people were you know going over and stocking up on you know anything that, that the FDA would just find horrifying. Adam here. wants to do that here. Yeah, I don't think we should do that. You just I, do that here. I'd like to open. Well, here's what I'm saying. They have Mexican food stands here. Yeah. How about I open a Mexican pharmacy? Oh, well, that's nice. You we know could actually I mean? we'd actually bring some Mexican you, authorities further you know, up north, and because they taught me that fists aren't just for fighting. You know the reality is, <laughs> you probably could do yeah. that, like on an Indian reservation or something. I bet you could. That would be good. I'd like to open here. So I'd like oh to my do. God! I'd like to get some land on an Indian reservation and open a fireworks and pharmacy Phar- slash casino. Fireworks, pharmacy, and casinos. I'd put slot machines out there, but I would, I would, I would sell like M80s and Valium. M80s. And, and, and then, and then you can bet your Valium in, you know, some. And I would sell a, va- I would sell a Valium bomb where I took like a cherry bomb and I, uh, I just uh, covered it with, uh, with Valium. And what you did is you throw a party, you just blow it up in the living room, and everyone got it. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. I could go for that. Kara. Uh huh. Yeah, you think living in a lawless community is bad, but it has its perks, like the fireworks and the prescription drugs. Kara? Uh Uh-huh. Or Kara? You're, uh, or Kara? Kara, uh uh-huh. Kara, you're 28. What's up? Yeah, hi. Um, I just want to know what's uh, going on with uh, Dr. Drew's uh, uh, issues he has with best friends. I have no issues with it. There's something that came up last night. With what? Best friends. I could see how you could think I would. I was referring to something Adam had said and trying to remind him what his take on best friends had been, that it was something that that it was primarily in a function of childhood and proximity to people you just spend a lot of time around. The old BFF? And that, and that best most friends people friends. don't have, they don't, right. they don't identify good friends as this is my, this is my best friend. That's not okay. something that people in adulthood typically identify. Right, right. It's usually bad when you're an adult and you're identifying someone as your best friend. Interesting. Yes. Um, you, yeah, I, I, I identify my best friend, quote, quote, um, but mostly it's just because she's my only adult friend. Yeah, why is that? The adult we- but that's that's what we're talking about. When somebody says that, we're like, Ooh, why why is that? Why, why don't you have more adult friends? Well, we have we have a small group of friends. It's, it's her and her husband, Dog. myself oh, husband. and my husband. I see. That that kind of thing. And that's it, huh? Yeah, but it's uh, we we keep to ourselves mostly because. Uh, Compared to the community that we are in, we're kind of outcasts. Why? What do you guys? Because um, um, he, his, her, 
husband Waco? is a tattoo artist. Uh-huh. No, I, I live in uh, Utah. Uh-huh. And, tattoo artist. Uh, and, uh, excuse me? And you guys are, what, like into Santa Rhea or well, something? Well, Utah's, Utah's a very reserved state. Very. Is a, yeah. well, are, you guys, are you guys not LDS? Um, we are. We were all raised LDS, but none of us are active. Oh, no. mm-hmm. so that's why they're out. Now you're acting out, though. What, you, what are you into? Yeah. What, what do you look like? <laughs> what do I look like? Yeah, you look like a troublemaker. No, actually, um, people you're are fat. very surprised. Oh, please, okay. That, uh, right, you got a lot of that. weird tats or aggressive piercings or something. Uh, yes. Right, I good. have. I don't have weird tats, but I do have aggressive piercings, okay. and I'm also a piercing a piercing artist. Good. Well, mission accomplished. No one wants to talk to you. <laughs> Fantastic. Now you 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 four can all just to huddle up and pretend it's you against the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good you times know. there, baby. Don't screw your kids up though. Okay. No, I'll try not to. Okay. Yes. Right, thank you. Take care of yourself. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, it's a. It's a. Uh, it's a strategy that always confounds me. This uh, I'm going to get a bunch of really aggressive tats. I'll give myself a crazy haircut, and yeah. I'll, I'll be I'll look very antisocial. Yeah. And I will wonder why everyone. Then I'll claim I'm, yeah, that I'm know, being persecuted. Of course. And I'll get into that like, hey man, you don't know me, okay? Yeah. Like I'm so tired of being judged when people don't even know who I. Yeah, you just really? the, just the way I look. How how yeah. sh- na- shallow and narrow minded people, people are. Yeah. Well, let, let's yeah. take it a Maybe step. Further, you, you know, remove the railway tie from my forehead. <laughs> if you and, put a, if you had, if you put a, a Klansman <laughs> hood on, you might you might be judged. And, well, it, yeah. and if you got the little teardrop uh, tattoo that go, suggests yeah. you've done some time, you might be judged. Be be not, prepared. Not, not, not to even be judged. judged. Not even judged. Just perceived as. Something. I will. I. I not even. Not even judging. Just. I don't think judging is such a <clears throat> negative, such a negative term, though. I mean, well, judging suggests you're you're coming from a higher place and looking down. It's just. It's not that. It's just. You know, it's a Klansman. That's what that is. Well, let's say you're being assessed. You're right. Assessment. Because it's an assessment. here's the deal, everybody. First off, if people didn't do that, you'd have no need to put the bone through your nose, and get the aggressive piercings. You understand? So don't blame them. For doing what you need them to do in order to fil- fulfill your sort of fantasy I will, life, I will never forget being on a on a tube in uh, London, those little subway they call it the tube, uh, sitting there in middle of the night, go, taking the thing back to, to where I was staying, and there was a guy with the, I'm not kidding you, maybe 35 piercings in his face, just mm-hmm. random, like through the cheek, through the nose, through the eyeball, right. every just everything, and I'll never forget. I'm staring at him, and we're the only ones in this car, and he looks at me and he goes, "What?" <laughs> and all I can say is, well, come on. <laughs> you know, the entire exchange was that. And I mean, that is just a perfect example of, of that. You know, I mean, what do you expect? I mean, you've got what more you metal look- in your face than I do in my entire vehicle. Right. I mean, of course I'm going to be I, I saw a guy in Cuba on. that had so many, uh, it looks like, like fish scales, you know, like That's layered what I saw tattoos. Too. I know. Yeah. I couldn't have made yeah, Tattoos or piercings? Uh, piercings, I beg your pardon. It was like, like layered. Like, yeah, like right. one it looks on like a top tribal of the rite of passage. It's, yeah. you know, less than but a he, fashion he, statement. Here, you know. Yes. Here's the thing, everybody. Not everyone is going to take the time to get to know the real you. <laughs> we'll just assume you're effed up by yeah. what you've shown us. And number two, this is what human beings do innately. I mean, mm. when you're walking down the street and a dog starts coming your way, you immediately decide, is the tail wagging? What breed of dog is it? Does it look like it's cared for? Or does it look like a stray dog? Yeah. Is, it, is it resemble like a, a dingo or is it old yeller? You know, this is a survival tactic uh, that exactly. I believe all human beings do all the time, whether it's survival or a yeah. sexual tactic. We cannot stop assessing whatever's put before us, and we're looking for something either we can hump, beat up, or flee from. Yeah. For me, it's it's all three. But I'd like to hump them, beat them up, and then flee. But this is what we do. And when fight you're or flight, uh, is yes, that what we're talking about hump, beat, no, I hump, hump, beat up, but, or fight. F- oh, hump, beat up, or fight. Right. Wow. But when you're covered with God, described college, we have we have mere <laughs> seconds to make an assessment, and and it and you will be assessed just like you assess everyone else. But again, the ones with the uh, piercings and whatnot have trouble assessing other people's emotional experiences. They, right. they can't accept what happens in you in relation to what they're putting out. 
Well, that guy, that they, guy, the guy with the hundred piercings in his face is has uh, those part partially because he wants to sit in a subway car in the middle of the night and go what? But he, oh, yeah, his whole absolutely. his whole ability to reach into the world and uh, you know attune to other people's feelings impaired, yeah. it's just impaired. Right, right, and um, that and you can't swim with that much metal in your head. Mm. No, you sink right to the bottom. Hopefully not, mm. Esther. Hello. You're 21. Yes. What's up? Um, I have a question for Dr. Zhu. Um, when I was a little girl, I caught my dad cheating on my mom. How old were you? Um, I was like 10, I think. Hmm. How'd you do that? Um, well, I just walked into the... Well, it, it, we were having a party, and I walked into the room, and he was with one of my mom's friends. And um, Doing what? They weren't, they weren't having sex. They were just kissing and stuff, but... Um, I told my mom immediately. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's right. I would keep a tranquilizer gun in the nightstand. <laughs> oh, you know, just <laughs> right in the back of the neck. It oh, takes four steps yeah. and then goes down. With that collar they had on Star Trek? Yeah, I come rushing in, tell the old lady, she's not feeling well. She yeah. got hold of something. I think I started drinking yeah, off the Don't punch. mind that daisy hanging out of her back. I'm going to take yeah. her for a nice long ride. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, so you ran, I mean, you ran out of the room and ran right to your mom. Well, not necessarily. Like I talked, I saw her later on the night, and then I just kind of took her into the room, and I I just remember vaguely, but I remember telling her. And did your dad see you when you saw him? No. No. Okay. They were fa they were they weren't facing me, so I, I just see. left the room. Okay. And so, um, ever since then, well, not ever since then, but since I've started to have like more in depth relationships with guys, I have like an extreme inability to trust them. Sure. And um, like I. Like, I ruin, like, really good relationships, I think, because of it. Mm. But I just wanted to know, like, if therapy would help or... It would help. Yes. Because it's, a very, it's a very simple equation here, which is, hey, cut it out. You have good insight. You know what's going on here. You identify the feelings. Cut it out. Right. Uh, but the problem is you're going to choose to cut it out with the guy that's going to be the one trustworthy one. This, that's, uh, the, that's the one she's going to get involved yeah. with and he's going to cheat. Yeah. I, I've yeah. Said, so. it, said it once, I'll say it a thousand times. Women are wired emotionally like fiats. <laughs> <laughs> They're horrible. Their oh wiring God. is horrible. They can you take, did not just make that analogy. Yes, they can oh, take no. almost nothing. No resilience. No resilience. No. They blow fuses. I would have gone with Fiero, but that's just me. I was thinking of Lancia, <laughs> yeah. but uh, that may, may you be go. a little, <laughs> Too obscure. A little Too esoteric obscure. for uh, our audience. But the point is, is a 10-year-old boy would have seen this and, and would have been water off a goose's ass. Do you know what I mean? Might yeah. Have, might have Take oh, a little, oh, I don't, yeah, little stutter I step. Been then, it wouldn't somebody, affected yeah. his relationships, in, right? He would, he, he, he yes. would have been a little pissed off, and it would have, you know, been a little. And yes. I suppose if it had resulted in the, the the fracture in his family, it would have had a lot of implications. But he, it wouldn't be quite as entrenched in the kinds of behavioral patterns as Esther is, right? And so look, you just cut it out and try to make sure it's a guy that is in fact trustworthy. And if you can't, then that's time for therapy. Yeah. But wait, a follow up question to uh, Esther. Esther, yeah. That was my first girlfriend's name, Esther, but uh, she insists on me called Esty. Do you, really? get, you get called Esty? Um, no, never. <laughs> She's the one whose kitchen you caught on fire, right? Yeah, Esther. Esther. Nice. I mean, Esty. You don't yeah. see a lot of people under the age of Esty 60. Esty Chilodanko? Esther these days. Yeah. I like the name. Though. It's her nice. name. Yeah, very good, Drew. Nice see? name. Kids, when you don't smoke pot, that's what you can do. <laughs> I barely remember her name. So, Esther, did yeah. your parents uh, inevitably divorce? Um, they split up for a little while, but then they got back together, and they've been together ever since. Right. Did, you, did you feel responsible at all? Um, now that I look back on it, I kind of do, but I know it was for the better because, I don't know, I feel like my mom should have known. Okay. Um, all right, so listen, your parents are still together. Right. They're, they're 45 years old and still together, right? Right. And uh, they had a little separation, a little little bump in the road. This is another thing. How you, old how you old? did what you wanted to do? You feel okay with the decision? Why 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 do you have to be a mess? How old were they when this all went down? Um, they were probably in their 34, early thirties. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah, it's just, yeah. <laughs> all right, baby. Okay. Don't don't be so screwed up. All right. <laughs> all right. Take care. Bye, Thank Esther. You. All right. Sounded cute. Can you give her a good time? Good times. Huh? Good times. Michelle. Michelle? Yes. You're 32? Yes. What's Hi, up? Hi, Adam. Hi, Dr. Drew. Hi, Michelle. Ryan. Hi, how are you? Okay. Um, I'm a little nervous about this. <laughs> okay. Um, We're gentle. <laughs> good. Um, I'm having a troubled marriage. No. I'm married 10 plus years. Mm-hmm. And I've, we've attempted counseling before. What does that mean? And Well, we, we went to, let's see, two 
two counseling sessions. Once I wouldn't leave him by myself because he couldn't go. And so you went to course, one counseling session. He, we went to three total, or I went to three total. He went to two. All right. And he, and then all of a sudden he just didn't want to go anymore. All right. So he what? Didn't you, have time, he didn't have time to go anymore. Right, well, that that you essentially had no counseling. That that would not accomplish yeah. anything. Right. Which I agree with that. And I'm really not happy in my marriage right now, and I don't know if attempting counseling by myself or, again, as a couple in a different situation. Well, if he will not go, and if he's not... Uh, do you have kids? Yes, we do. You'd hope on behalf of the kids you can get a little commitment out of him to come in and try to work this thing out. But if you cannot, and he will not participate, you got to take care of yourself and definitely get into therapy and sort of sort things out and make a clear decision and plan and do what you got to do. What's the big beef? Well, because I've been thinking of leaving the marriage. Why? I'm not happy. Why? No. I'm this close oh, to hanging up on he's you. He's not goofball. there. He's never there. He's never there. What's he do work? Emotionally and physically. I mean, besides his work with him being gone all the time, and then when he is home, he's just not there emotionally either. All right, so you're angry at him. Have you cheated? Has he cheated? Have you cheated? Him? I you. Can't. You. No, but I've been approached to go out with people and I tell them I can't, you know, I'm married but I, like, wanted to go out with them, thinking could this be the person I maybe should be with instead, and I'm just being stupid, sticking See, in this This marriage. is when women cheat, right yeah. here. This is, she's on that cusp. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, Michelle? Are you close yeah. by? Or? Yeah. Where are, you, where are you calling from? <laughs> where? Did, did you bounce back from the kids or are you still a little... <laughs> hey, <laughs> Michelle? Look, you're angry at the guy. God. Jeez, you're angry at all guys. You're angry. Well, baby. That, that's also how women are. Wild, you're gonna right? screw those kids up. Yeah, they get angry. They just get they get angry at their guy. They hate everyone. Well, that's no, no, all men, just men, not women. Yeah, yeah. No, the, but they never did like women, so it works fine. Now they hate men too. Yeah. So there's no no creature on the planet that they like. Hey, uh, well, okay, baby. For the sake of the kids, you got to take care of this and let him know that uh, hey, this is it. Because guys, TikTok. Guys, guys don't, don't, don't hear know. that. Yeah, they really don't get what that means when you say you're not available. They don't know what that means. Well, last time we started the counseling, that's what I said. I said, I can't take this anymore. This is it. He, so he said, okay, then I'll go to counseling with you. We did those three sessions and that was does it. Does he like, want, does he want to make the marriage work? He, I think he says it in words. Right. I don't know if yeah, he does. Sounds comfortable. And he says he loves me, but yet he's not there. Yeah. And, you know, it's, and, always, and he always puts his work first. Yeah. What's he do? He's an electrician. Okay. Hmm. There you go. Uh, well, look, this is this. Everyone goes through these problems, all right? And uh, you you tell him you're serious. Let him know you're serious about leaving, and uh, you continue with the counseling and keep him in the counseling. And uh, I know you're frustrated. Try not to be angry in front of the kids. It freaks them out, all right? Right. right. Yeah, which has happened a few times. Uh, okay. It's not not. Mm -mm. What's he not do? Okay. Commercial or residential work? Uh, commercial. Okay. Good times. You got to give him that that final, I'm serious. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You tell him uh, next time he starts uh, giving you a hard time, you like uh, yell. It'll be this weekend. Yeah. You, 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 you yell, uh, look, buddy, you're not, uh, you're not pulling 16 gauge uh, Romex here. This is more than a job. And just see if you can work in something really specific about electrical. Yeah, use and, the and, um, like, use the out. emotionally wired like a Fiat one. I think that might no, actually I heard that of score with him. Call before that. Yeah, All right, that'd baby. be direct hit. <laughs> Tell him you're serious. Yeah, guys need a little little kick in the pants every once in a while. I'm serious as a call. The and guys how understand. it's hard it's hard to get them out of their their cadence. Does she have to actually yell at them? Like, I'm serious. I'm serious. I, I I think you say it in a strongly worded letter. <laughs> oh yeah. <No. laughs> Well, look, let's face it. We're, as guys, I hate to admit it, but as, as guys, we're looking not to be hassled in a relationship more than we're looking for a fulfilling That's relationship. That's why I'm saying right there, comfortable. Guy's comfortable. He's, you know, he's, he, he's, he's having some troubles, but he doesn't want to do anything about it. Also, guys to, you know. really don't understand why they can't be allowed to focus on their work because it's so important to them. If they're not really being sensitive to what that means to their wife. Right, it's, and it's, and also, guys, I and I, you know, Lord knows, I've been in this situation myself a few times. We can't understand why you're so miserable when we're not really doing anything wrong. 
we're not cheating and we're not drinking. We're just working a lot. We're kind of busy. Maybe we're a little preoccupied. We seem a little distracted. And then the problem is, is you get home and you're so tired from work, you want to just be sort of left alone and relax a little bit and masturbate. The catch way too, on this, honestly, is that sometimes women like Michelle have unlimited needs for him to be around. Yes. And so he starts giving, it's not enough. And so now his work starts getting eroded. And, and, and we're, we're, how do you balance that? Well, here's, and so she needs a little help, too. Yes. And here's the, here's the other thing. And I don't know if Michelle's doing this or not. But when a man is unhappy, he looks to his work. And he looks oftentimes, sometimes he just looks to his possessions. It's like he's like, hey, I want that Corvette. He looks away. I'm unhappy. Say, yeah. Or what's going on at work? Or yeah. I need a promotion. Or I need to go fishing. Yeah. Yeah. When women are unhappy, they look at the relationship. Yep. And then they look at the guy and they go, what's wrong? And what isn't he doing? Mm-hmm. And now the guy's freaked out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Take a little break. Ryan Reynolds is here. Van Wilder's the name of the movie out in about nine days. April fifth. April fifth. We'll, we'll be right. Load up. We'll be right back after this. Hey everybody, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam Corolla. It's Doctor Drew, and we like to fly uh, airplanes. Oh, if you wouldn't mind. Doctor Drew's uh, wife. And uh, daughter are going to Paris in a uh, four or five days. <laughs> it, is a, it is a double whip now. Actually, the double... Anderson has three whips because the wife is two whips. And then uh, Paulina... Uh, when was yeah. the last time you saw my daughter? It's been a little while. G- give me four. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Listen, Drew, oh, I don't... Oh! <laughs> You're all serious. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh. I don't know what to do. I mean, like, what do you do... Here's the situation. Ryan Reynolds is our guest, by the way. Van Wilder is the name of the movie. National Lampoon Van Wilder. We've seen the commercials. You. Don't get up. Good reviews coming out a week from this Friday. But, Drew, yeah. what do you do as a kid when you you have so much opportunity? And, and, and the word is yes to, to, to many things. Yeah. And how do you establish discipline and or how do you establish maybe even just a sort of compass and not moral compass but like just a sort of relative thing you know yeah, like i, know I was saying i was saying to my partner jimmy whose uh son he has a uh, eight-year-old son he's a great kid but he gets whatever he wants whenever he wants it mm. and and christmas was coming up and i could remember going nuts you know counting the minutes the seconds the hours you know till christmas arrived because oh, yeah. i never got anything and you'd then get, you'd get the handlebars of a bicycle yeah i wouldn't get <laughs> i didn't get that much here in christmas either but it was, it was my my one chance for a score it was right. like you're living in prison and in once twice a year one is your birthday and the other is christmas I someone brings you a that. cake i right? completely relate to that christmas was like the mardi gras for me yeah yeah it was bonanza like i get finally get something i don't like, care what it is Right, like when you, when you, when you grow up in a poor family or a cheap family, or in, you know, in Drew's case with the cheap family and everything, you have two two times a year you get presents, Christmas and your birthday, and and that's it. You didn't get much during the other, or, or maybe nothing. Yeah. Now I was saying, uh, a commenting about Jimmy's son, which is, is Christmas that big a deal when you just sort of get what you want anyway? We I mean, I know he looks well, forward to Christmas. I mean, is, he, is, he, is Jimmy giving him, you know, th- three times the stuff that he would give him normally on a Christmas? There's, there's no he doubt he looks forward to Christmas like yeah. any kid would. But for for me, it was more than look forward to. Yeah, it was I, like I, it. It was yeah. it was it. Yeah. And I said, look, if you didn't get him some video game that, let's say, he asked Santa mm-hmm. for... A week later, he'd get it when you guys were over at uh, Costco or yeah. something, just shopping. He'd say, I want that, and you'd throw it in the bag. Yeah. So, how how big a deal is it? Uh, we try not to do that. Oh, you don't? No, no. You mean get Jimmy's kid stuff? We try not to get Jimmy's stuff. Not, <laughs> we, it's hard not to get Why are you Kevin, punishing Kevin? Kevin is a cute kid. Why are you kid? punishing yeah, Kevin, Kevin that yeah, way? But, but uh, no, we don't. It's it's like, hey, save it. You want it? Save your money. You, you can buy it. Yeah, but that's but you give him eighty dollars a week allowance, right? No, we we have this whole star. Well, <laughs> like you're taking your boys out, you're going to three baseball games. Yeah. They're, they've been out. Well, that's the piece. That's they've been out. They're out on the field at Dodger Stadium. They're going backstage everywhere. I mean, that's what, the what part do you that, look forward to? That's then? the part that I don't know. And you can no longer. I'm not saying I'm not cursing the kids. Yeah, no, I, I know. What you mean. I love the boys like they're my own, no. but now you can't just go to a ball game. You got to get out onto the field. 
and actually, right? Get, well, would, it, would it be less about you know, less about you know taking them to these to these wonderful things and more about just instilling perspective in them? I mean, just well, saying, look, this is something special that you're going to. Well, that's I try I try to get that. that like you know? we we went we went a trip to South America with a group of very powerful people who we met the president of every country we went to, and, mm-hmm. including Fidel Castro. We're standing there with oh, Fidel wow. Castro. I'm going, and they're going. He's boring. I thought. Hey, that's fine. Yes, he is boring, but just don't forget that you were here. Yeah, don't you, you'll them. understand someday. These kids are eight. They met. They met. They uh, met Fidel. I was sixteen before I met Fidel Castro. <laughs> Do you understand? No, no, seventeen. Seventeen. But this was my junior year. That's right. Seventeen years old before I met Fidel and Castro. And these kids of, were barely into the second grade. And, and my sort of message to them is: is if you want to, if this is kind of stuff that makes you happy. Look at these people who were able to go on these trips, and you know they run businesses, and yeah. they went to well at school, and this is you, know, you want to strive that great, good, enjoy. All right, their their life's going to be one big letdown. Yeah, no, no doubt. one big bad no, no. seats. Nice. They get jobs like a pharmacist or something. They live in a nice uh, condo somewhere. Uh, Ryan, how old are you? I was just thinking about this. Oh, Twenty five. I think he's twenty five. Twenty five. Think about that. I know he's ruined. Too. He's, he's go, going going to London. Visiting. How many times you met Fidel Castro? <laughs> How many times have I met Fidel Castro? Yeah, yeah, Six times. And where were you at twenty five, Adam? Think yeah. about yourself at twenty five. I, I, I'll. Uh, all right. Well, I'll tell you. We'll take this call, and I will. Uh, you guys talk this call, and I will try to figure out it, when's your birthday. Uh, October twenty third. October twenty third. All right, seventy six. So you'll you'll be twenty six uh, October twenty third. Uh, well, correct? yeah. All right. Talk to uh, this Conga. Figure out where I was at twenty five. I, I in, was in I was in my fourth year of medical school. Okay. Wow. Talk, talk to the call, please. Willie. Willie. Yes. What's up, hey, Willie. How are you? I'm all right. What's going on? Not much. Just uh, I was just going to ask some advice because we were sitting at dinner one night with my wife and her parents, and all of a sudden her dad just said we should have some fun sometime. No. Oh, that's BS. Please, Hi. Willie. Please. What? Come on now. What's, what's BS? Yeah. Uh, have some fun sometime? Liar! Liar whore! Liar whore! And you know it! I'm trying to figure out where I was at 25 and a half. I still know you're lying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm lying? Miniature yeah, doll? Now you're really lying. No way. <laughs> well, see, my, my wife and her parents want to have a foursome, and I don't know what to do. All right. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, for a minute, I uh, thought he was lying, but now... Now I see. Now that you yeah, reiterate exactly. the same question, I know well, you can't no, be lying. See, that was the fun. I, I didn't know what he meant by fun, and then he elaborated do- during dinner. Yeah, but okay. we, we knew what you mean by, fil- by fun. A foursome really. with, with the kids. And that's basically. why we're saying that's BS. What, what would be in it for you the there, uh, Willie? Well, yeah. I've always liked her mom. She knew that. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, and then her how, dad just... I don't know why her dad brought it up, but... How old is her mom? Her mom's 53. Nice. Wow, that's a solid All right, well, age. you better hit that, because uh, you break her hip in another few years. Yeah, I know, time's wasting. <laughs> so, so you guys think I should go through with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Really, this is such BS, please. No, it's I, not BS. All right, what? Come to Iowa and you can join, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Now I believe well, you. See now if that I can get that, that red eye. Now that you um, mentioned that. Yeah, now I'm coming out. Well. All right there, buddy boy. Good times. Yeah. All right. Let's see, uh, 19, I, I would have been, uh, I think at uh, 25 and a half, it would have been, uh, well, it would have been 1990 for me, right? Yeah, yeah 1990, 25 and a half, living in a, uh, living in a one-bedroom in North Hollywood, um, stripper girlfriend had left me, I believe. Esty? Esty? No, no, she'd left me years before in junior high. Oh, okay. This still, is, uh, still licking my wounds from mm-hmm. that uh, right. point. Um, driving the name again? I forget now. Lindsay, Stri- Lindsay, Lindsay to Hounslow. Yeah. L- no, she was from Hounslow. I see. Yeah. You actually had a anyway. stripper girlfriend, like an actual current regular stripper girlfriend. That's where I met. He, her, he went yeah. and, and yeah. I went, wow. I went and extracted her from the uh, strip club. You did bar. fresh yeah. off the pole. Just brought her in, and there we go. I had to bring the pole with me. Oh, really? I had to break the pole. I actually off have a carrot. pole kit in the car, which is ironic that you bring that up now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. see, so she, so she's like a. This is well, LA, you know, you know how paper? you know you ever see like how uh, monkeys uh, eat termites? Mm-hmm. They put a stick in the yes, uh, termite yes. hole and then they crawl up on right. and they lick them off. That's how I got her out of the strip club. I broke <laughs> the pole off <laughs> and carried the pole with it her. Just, and and, and, and be like fair, it. you've got to create an environment that sort of makes her feel comfortable and so you put and the yeah, lights up. The lights up in the apartment and put the pole up. Some black lights, you know, you're in. Let's see, living in that apartment, she'd probably dumped me. Uh, <laughs> I was... Uh, then she punch you out and then dump you and then leave and then just dump everything out of your apartment? Like pulled everything out? No. I love it when they throw everything out the window when they don't live there. No, she punched, <laughs> uh, she punched me out after a uh, softball game that took about uh, 14 hours because I had gone to play softball 
and the game got canceled, so we decided to go drinking instead. And I was supposed to come home and go out with her, and Ooh. I came home at the 2 in the morning loaded. And I just remember standing at the foot of the bed, still in the softball uniform, and she, uh, she, she cold-cocked me right across the face. Oh, she punched you yeah. in the face. In the face. Wow. And I remember right. thinking on the way down to the, oh. on the, way down to the bed, because I figured, I'll just fall back in the bed. She hit me I'm in my <laughs> uniform. On the way down, I thought, you know what? Uh, good. Because, <laughs> yeah. because here's the deal. I'm drunk. Yeah. I used to box. I've been punched a million times. That was no big deal. And now she's going to feel bad. And I've already forgotten about it because I'm loaded. <laughs> yeah. So I, my head and hit the pillow. And you're on your way down. Yeah. I'm on the way insane. down. My head hit the pillow. I woke up in my softball cleats. <laughs> and she was apologizing to me the following morning, which I, which I thought was good. I'll well, tell you, a good sock from a girl is is much better than days and days of, of service from them regarding point. your regarding yeah. your behavior, especially if you're loaded yeah. and you don't see it coming. You Pow! It, yeah. It's great. So um, she just dumped me. She'd uh, moved into my grandparents' house, who were out of town yeah. and about two blocks away, and start seeing a guy from work whose oh, motorcycle nice. was parked out in front of my grandparents' house oh, constantly. Like How nice of Grandma to offer her your her house. Yeah. They're decent folks. Full the, surveillance. Uh, did she walk with the boyfriend into dinner too? The new was this? She was out of. They were out of town for like a month. And so, was this? Uh, is this what the announcer at the strip club? Or no, this is. Uh, she. I. I'd, I'd forced yeah. her to quit the her her first nice. love, which was stripping <laughs> nice after uh, we were living together. And uh, I was uh, driving a uh, like a seventy nine beat up uh, Nissan pickup truck, working uh, swinging a hammer for a living, but sort of freelance. Making about two hundred and fifty bucks a week cash, and taking on temporary boarders at my house, which was technically a one bedroom, but there was a little loft. And for about one hundred and fifty bucks a month, a different guy would show up with a cardboard box with like a pair of underpants and a can of Dinty Moore stew in it, oh, and stay God. there, stay there for the month, and then rotate out. It's like Don Quixote. I yeah, know. It this really is, is. Uh, like, this is what I'm doing at age twenty five, and no car insurance, no health. No medical, no money in the bank, no credit cards. Wow. That's good time. Wow. And then, good and then we've got Ryan here yeah. who travels the world. Same life. Insured. Late time radio. Oh, <laughs> yeah, same <laughs> life. Two car, two houses, <laughs> leasing out, renting a house. Same life. Same that's, life. Uh, same as yours. Mirrored. Sure. Same chick situation, too. <laughs> no uh, doubt. I went out, single man, no money. And driving a beat-up Nissan pickup truck with a lumber rack on top of it. I'm doing all right. That's fine. But you know what? I have less game than Atari right now, and I, I, that is a definite fact. That is all going to change in about yeah. nine days, my brother. Oh, thanks. Shannon? Thank you. Yeah? Hey, Shannon. You're uh, hey. 16? Yeah. What's up? Well, um, I've been like kind of like bisexual, like sort of, you know? Yeah, this is a betting, it's a betting opportunity here. Okay. Shannon? Kind of yeah. like bisexual. You got that little girl voice, so we're going to bet on you, okay? Why? There, because I'm a little girl voice. Oh, yeah, yeah now, do. now we're really gambling right. on you, all right? Okay. Yeah. All right, so hold on a second, because we have to take a break. Ah, uh, okay. All right, okay. baby. Okay. Ryan Reynolds is our guest tonight. Yeah. Van Wilder's name of the movie. And when we come back, we'll do some uh, old-fashioned love line gambling on Shannon. Okay. Hey, everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. I'm Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is our guest tonight. Ryan is... Uh, well, you probably know him uh, best from Two Guys, a Girl, in the Pizza Place all those years. And uh, sure. now you know him from all the commercials for Van Wilder. New uh, National Lampoon movie, which is coming out on the 5th. Which you really must see. Really. I think you'd enjoy it. I think people will enjoy it. What was the, uh, what was the budget on that movie? Do you know? I don't know, but there were many zeros. Mm. It was ex they're expensive to make these, you know, young buck comedies. Where, um, where'd you film it? We're going to jail for the things we do in this movie, by the way. So, go on an empty stomach. Where, mm. Where'd you film that? In uh, Canada? No, Los Angeles. None, really? of that, none of that runaway production for us. Where, uh, no. where at in Los Angeles? Uh, we shot that at UCLA, campus of UCLA, and then uh, uh, a studio. Oh, they let you do that, East huh? Hollywood, yeah. Uh, all right. We have our uh, dollar sound. Drew, you got oh, your dollar out. I guess right here. Van, you shall, get your dollar out. Yeah. Explain to Ryan how it works. Well, yeah. here's how it is. We bet on people's past, okay, not uh, their present. Meaning, we're not trying to figure out what Shannon is up to now. We're trying to figure out what led her into what is up with her what now. created that voice of hers, for instance? The sort of, it's like, you know, voice? No, the little... Or the baby voice. The baby, the baby voice. voice. But he was really sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Shannon? 
Shannon. I do not have a baby voice. All right. <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know Ryan, like Ryan Reynolds was on that. What, what about him? I didn't know he was on. Hi, he Shannon. Yes, I am. Yeah, he's hot. Why? That's oh, nice of you, Shannon. I love you. Oh. Hold on. Oh, this is going to affect my bed. <laughs> That's what she's trying to do. She's trying to soften uh, you up. Soften me okay. up, Shannon. All right. Now, your question was, uh, was paid to make out with a girl. You liked yeah. it. You liked it. And now you want to know, you want to tell your parents you're bi, right? No, I don't. I don't want to, but I feel like obligated. You feel obligated. To. Obligated right, to hold, tell your parents you're bi. Because you made out with a girl and liked That's, it. That's so uh, paid you. Okay. Hmm. All right. You ready to roll here? Drew, you go first. All right. Um... Kind of a a hole dad in some way. No, but you take it back. Mom is a little bit uh, sort of intrusive, but the real problem was uh, sort of a sexually or sexually abusive babysitter. Oh, ah, interesting, interesting. Uh, female or male? Uh, uh, female. Yeah. How about that? Female sexually How abusive babysitter. A little twist. Okay, really? I'm going to go with the uh, payback to dad. I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with mom and dad together. Mm-hmm. Well, Oh, you're going with that, too? Because yeah. this is a little bit of a yeah, stretch yeah. No, no, this, no. Day, this day and age. Could be, if mom and dad aren't still together, stepdad showed up early mm. and is the dad. Mm -hmm. uh, workaholic, prick, mm -hmm. and a little payback. A little mm. hatred for dad. Well. And uh, I'm going to go for, with a little sexual abuse. From? From... You got, uh, with, with that voice, you got to go sexual abuse. You got I know, to. I know. I go sexual abuse, but who did it? Older stepbrother? No, nah, outside of the family. Old, a, a, a teenage boy when she was uh, six, five, six years old. Okay, good. Like, like a good cousin enough? or something. Or something ah, like yeah, that. Could be something like that. I was going with cousin. Right. I was good. going with cousin. Now I you also... may, you may. I'm saying I don't, don't want to coach you, hmm. but you may want to go with something straight. Because she may not admit to okay. something. Um, first, I think she's reading Penthouse Forum for us live on the air. Um, I, I also, I, I'd like to double down on Drew's bet, you know, because right. he is the trained. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing. Here. Although I, I, I will, I mean, I'm actually gonna, I'm actually just gonna, you know, go uh, against the grain anyway and just say that she's, uh, uh, we're just straight up. This is literally just a, she's a short story. She's acting out for us. And, you know, I think that's about it. I'm so saying. no, no wholesale uh, abuse. Yeah, I'm, there's no wholesale. But I'm, I actually will will be willing to bet that she's from a very strict family, like oh, a very. Okay. This is right. there's, a, there's an element right. element of conservative. Right. Right. All right, Shannon. Yeah. All right. Let's. Hey, uh, you are so off. It's horrible. Oh, it is. Okay, I was never. But I wasn't. Abused. Was I, Shannon? I was never abused. All right. And my dad's a little bit strict. My mom is not at all. all right. And I'm like a. I was like a street punk. Okay. Street when I was punk. Younger. Now, how did that happen? Like, I ran away a lot. Okay. Now, now yeah. no one ever hit you in the home? No one ever struck you? Um, well, I had like a stepdad that was kind of an asshole or a butthole. Oh, what did he do to you? A hole. I'm sorry. What did he do to you? Um, well, he didn't really do anything to me because he liked me, but he did a lot to my sister and my dog. Your dog? And my mom. Well, the dog, the dog had it coming, but what do you do to your sister, your mom, and your he dog? Like, he used to, like, hurt them a lot, like, kick them in the head, and, like, he, like, um, he kidnapped my mom, and, um, he went to jail for, like, seven years for it. For kidnap? And he just got out. Kidnapping the dog or your mom? Mom. Because my mom. Your mom. And where's your real dad? He's, he's around. I go, like, back and forth between my parents. Mostly my dad. And why did he leave? Why did my dad leave? Why did your dad leave your oh, mom? Because my mom had, or when they were married, my mom got pregnant with another guy's baby. When they were married? Because both my parents are like really light skinned and like Swedish and stuff. And, the, and my little sister is like Italian looking. So he could tell that it was. Wow. Who is the alcoholic here? Which of them? Um, no alcoholics. Had to be some drinking going yeah, on. Oh, else. This yeah. behavior, please. Yeah. None. All right, now and, and then, when you were out, how old were you when you hit the street of the punk? Uh, I was a punk in like second grade. Second grade, so you were second seven. Grade. Second grade. And wow. when you hit the street at seven, no one ever no, did. No, no, no. I didn't hit the street at seven. At like eleven. All right, yeah, you hit the street at eleven. 11. Ladies and gentlemen, no. Tatum O'Neill. No one ever did right. anything sexual to you when you were ten, eleven. Well. 
Well, I didn't like start doing stuff till I was like thirteen. Like, but no one ever tried anything with you before. Yeah, that. of course they tried stuff. But Come here, okay. How old were you when all that business first started? <laughs> like, what do you mean on business? When people started trying to do things to you, how old were you when they started? Like twelve. Twelve. That was the first time anybody tried to sexually sort of touch you or anything. Oh no, but I don't really remember the other times. They weren't like a big thing. Well, who was the first time? Would you say? Oh, well, my sister's friends. Your sister's friend. Her guy friends do stuff. How old were you when that all went down? I don't know, like 10. 9, 10. Yeah. True. True. Make a great trial attorney. I know. I was saying Literally leading the witness. Down. I was yeah, I'm hit. leading the witness because there's no doubt in my mind what's going on here. Mm-hmm. And am I not right? No. This is like an episode of Leave it to Beaver. Listen, man, the, we, this started with her saying we're both way off to what sounding like being raised in a yeah. uh, Cuisinart. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, in fact, with us being exactly right on. No, not I. I don't. I don't know exactly, but my, the point is, is y- you would be better off if what we said happened rather than what actually happened with the oh. running away and the abusive, uh, you know, stepdad who did time for for kidnapping terrorizing the family and kidnapping the, mom and the, the your sister's you know friends coming on to you at ten years old and physical abuse and listen this this I mean, is what we were hearing in your mess, voice baby. Shannon this is what we heard we could hear that there was an extreme arrest in your development oh. from all this trauma you're a trauma survivor oh that's my what development I- isn't suffering undeveloped yeah you got you have breasts but uh, your your mind is uh, not uh, not as far along as your rack. Really? Which is true with most women. <laughs> but, Shannon, nice. baby, yeah. listen, we we got to wrap it up. This, right. this bisexuality is all about not knowing what you are, who you are, and the desire to tell your parents is a desire to create more chaos and to get back at them in an aggressive way. If you want to do something to help yourself, get some help with all this. You, well, you really got to figure... I, should I tell them? There's no, no, don't no. tell them anything. No. You, tell them like, you... I just got expelled from school, okay? Tell them you'd like to get and some therapy. You want to get help. You need... Wanna, they want to, like, know all the stuff about me because they haven't, like, taken the time. All right, well, then you get a therapist, a family therapist, and you, you sit down in a safe environment with a professional that can observe this process, and you let them have it. That's fine. And listen, uh, parents who uh, screw over their kids in a huge way, you get exactly what you deserve. You get a screwed-up handful of a kid. You get the, you want that you want that heterosexual kid who's going to have grandkids for you and get a nice job working with computers. You don't get an ounce of that. You get a screwed up pain in the ass who's acting out their whole life, who's in and out of you know rehab, who's getting into crazy abusive relationships. And you know what? As sorry as I am for the kids, you deserve every goddamn ounce of that as a parent. And I, I hope you have to uh, suffer with this the rest of your life, you horrible, horrible parents. Okay, we're uh, right back with Ryan Reynolds after this. All right there, folks. That's the uh, end of the show. I want to thank Ryan Reynolds for coming in here. Oh, thank you. And uh, just uh, being a... Uh, it really... Uh, the success could not happen to a nicer guy. Well, thank you, Ben. So, uh, we... Uh, thank you. Yeah, hey, don't we, get up. Cheers. Ryan is a is a uh, is a great guy and a talent, and uh, we uh, encourage everyone who's listening to go out and see Van Wilder, the new uh, National Lampoon movie, which is coming out one week from this uh, Friday. So you will not be disappointed. Check it out. Mazel Tov is uh, what I have to say. Oh, cheers, uh, very much. Cheers, a man who's a mistaken as a Jew uh, every once in a while. <laughs> oh, nice. So, well, actually, what well, is Passover? When I was driving the mini pickup truck and living with the stripper, there was no there was no allegations of Judaism there. Now that no. I'm in comedy. And I drive the BMW. Now I'm a Jew. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah. until next time, this is Adam Crow for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Just like, it's not like I sleep with them. Just like if I suck their dick, they're real small. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Love Line is Ann Wilkins Engel. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.